It is the 20th of the 3rd, 2013. This is today's radioactive reality. I'm going to go ahead and start off on Fukushima Diary, uh, the daily the daily news section. They've got a story. The blackout was caused by a mouse in the panel board uh, that has been left on the truck since the 18th of March 2011. According to TEPCO, the power blackout of the Fukushima plant was caused by a mouse that came in the terminals and it caused a short circuit. The panel board was provisionally installed on the bed of a truck on the 18th of March 2011. Knowing the risk, TEPCO has been leaving it there. The panel board was for reactor 3 and 4. Uh, they're saying they have about like six of these um, set up around uh, the Diachi and who knows the Diani plant kind of thing. Uh, there's not a regular power source kind of thing. They've, they've been running on emergency operations um, since 2011 and things just tend to break down. Uh, you got to remember they dumped who knows how much salt water on these reactors in the initial days of this um, situation. Some other stories going on on Fukushima, Fukushima Diary today. Highly re radioactive dust accumulated on the body of the super bullet train in um, Japan. <coughs> Apparently the train's been running up and down through the north part of the country and they uh, discovered nuclear dust accumulated on the underside of this train. So now it's radioactive as well. Nuclear disaster headquarters to lift rice planting restrictions in the 20 kilometer area exclusion zone around Fukushima. Uh, they announced the, to lift the rice planting restriction and a bunch of different prefixtures. Uh, in these areas, they are going to start the experimental planning to restart the ordinary rice planting in 2013. You know, if they're going to grow this rice, some poor fool is going to sell it, and uh, who knows is going to end up reading or eating it, that kind of thing. Um, and where's the other one? TEPCO to discharge groundwater into the sea if it's under a thousand becquerels um, per whatever. Um, they put out some stories last week about how they can't stop the groundwater through going through the, the power station and into the buildings and, and getting radioactive and leaking out of the sea kind of thing. And what they're going to try to do is they're trying to pump the water before it hits the plant and, and directly into the ocean kind of thing. Um, the point is, is they're, they're not going to um, decontaminate or, or whatever their, their little super deradiation water treatment things going on. And those tanks are running out of room, and they're talking about dumping those directly into the ocean as well. Um, again, we've got three uh, corium nuclear core reactors through containment and into the ecosystem already. And uh, these stories come up just to kind of, you know, where's all that radiation coming from? Over to the Yeoni News. <clears throat> I'm just going to read the headlines today. Uh, there's a lot going on with the Louisiana, um, the Bayou Corn sinkhole. The governor finally showed up. Quote, solvents being released from the giant sinkhole, not only oil. Uh, there's a whole hodgepodge of stuff going on there. They're saying there's some um, storage areas in there that are full of nuclear stuff and God knows what else. And uh, the thing just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Uh, there's an export now. Eight source zones of oil and gas could be feeding area underneath the giant sinkhole. And that's all the crap they're trying to explain away coming up through the oil sheens and a huge dead zone in that whole area. Uh, people just need to get away from there. Uh, Arnie Gunnarsson coming out of Fairwinds. Radiation released during massive power failure at Fukushima Diachi. 24-hour outage is unconscionable. Shows plant is unstable. Now, if a mouse can take out a nuclear power plant um, because they can't set everything up correctly, um, how are we supposed to keep these guys responsible for the next, you know, 10,000, 100,000 years with this stuff? They're saying as the heat, as the tanks heat up in these spent fuel pools, uh, the hotter the water that gets, the, the more radiation is released, of course, because you have the, the evaporation and whatnot into the atmosphere. <sighs> Giant sinkhole continues to grow. Three acres in the past week. Uh, of course, there's an obvious oil sheen on top. And a BP oil disaster in the Gulf of Mexico. There's a blizzard in the Gulf from the BP disaster. It just sucked everything out of the surface. Red layer fell on the seafloor. Nobody knew what it was. 
could cause significant damage to ecosystem. Now they sprayed all this Corexit on top of this, this leaking oil um, for months and months and hundreds and thousands of barrels. Uh, they've downplayed millions of barrels and uh, you know millions of gallons of this Corexit that they sprayed on this stuff and it all fell to the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. So of course there's this huge slurry sludge uh, going on down underneath there and that whole ecosystem is trashed, has been trashed and will be trashed for a very long time. Uh, of course, the crucial cooling systems restored, TEPCO says. Local official, we don't believe Fukushima disaster is under control. The New York Times say it's impossible to independently access conditions at the plant. According to some stories off of Fukushima Diary and some other places that I said, um, TEPCO, it's not a normal energy setup. The power is not running regularly. Um, to any of these reactors. They have emergency set up and they are flying by the seat of their pants and again they've got control panel boards set up on trucks outside of these reactors kind of thing. And uh, you know after they sprayed millions and millions of gallons of salt water onto all this electrical stuff uh, there's no wonder they're, they're having problems. And uh, And again, the story goes on and on. Yeah, there's one other story I wanted to cover. It was from the, the actual 311 accident. Uh, one U.S. Navy sail, sailor, our digital watches stopped working, went offshore from Fukushima after 311. We were all laughing at first, but then they all realized <clears throat> what was going on. Uh, Wristwatches, digital wristwatches, are kind of canaries in the coal mine when it comes to radiation and EMP kind of thing. Uh, they tend to crap out first, and it ends up that everybody up on that bridge, their watches were dead all at the same time. And uh, the craziness continues, of course. Uh, that's about all I'm going to put out for today. Uh, of course, if I missed anything, please let me know. Attach your comments and videos below. Uh, it's a beautiful day. It's a little cold here in Des Moines. Um, enjoy while you can. I sure am. Thanks.